Hi, this is Julie with Beadaholic, and today I want to show you an overview of seed beads. We get a lot of requests and questions at Beadaholic regarding seed beads, so I thought it'd be helpful if I just did a quick video just talking about their sizes, shapes, finishes, and so on. There are thousands of seed beads out there, so before I start, I do want to say this is not going to cover every single one out there, but it's going to cover the more common ones. First, let's talk about seed bead sizes, because I know this confuses a lot of people. The most common that you're going to come across, and there are others, but the most common are 6, 8, 10, 11, and 15. And you'll notice that a 6 is quite a bit larger than a 15. So it's a bit counterintuitive. So the larger the number, the smaller the bead. And so I've done a little line here showing you their gradu graduating sizes. And there is quite a difference. And you see when you get down to a 15, it's very, very tiny. Probably the bead that you're going to come across using the most in a lot of bead weaving or bead embroidery projects is a size 11-0, which I have represented here. And I actually have some Mayuki ones, and I also have some Toho. And you'll see that even though these are both an 11-0, they are actually a little bit of a different shape and a different size. So not all seed beads are the same is what I'm trying to get at. And here's a 15. So here's a 15 Mayuki and a 15 Toho. So you can see again, just slightly a different size. It's very small, but it is there, so I want just to point that out. And speaking of Mayukis and Tohos, well, what's the difference? Because you're going to come across this a bit. Toho is, has a nice rounded shape to it. They're both made in Japan. They're vo both very uh, precise and even and uniform. But the Tohos are the round ones, and the Mayuki, at least the Mayuki Delicas, which are the ones that are represented here, are more of a cylindric shape, which means they have a larger hole compared to their outer body, and that's going to allow you to create multiple passes through the bead, which is really nice. So here's an example of Tohos worked into an earring. You can see that nice round shape. You can see how they're woven together, and they are glass. And I'm going to skip over this one for a second. I'm going to go right to the Mayuki Delica, and you can see when these ones are woven in shape, they lock into place. And this is a peyote stitch, which is really ideal for the Mayuki Delicas. They're also really great for loom work as well because they are going to be so uniform. And then here I want to come back. This is a check glass seed bead, and if you look really close, you're going to see these are just not quite as even, which gives it a wonderful bohemian vintage feel. It makes them not quite as good for certain bead stitches, though, so that's something to keep in mind when you're planning which bead to get. Here they've been worked into a star ornament. You can see that they are a bit irregular, but it creates this really wonderful kind of vintage old world feel to them. I've also pulled out some Charlottes. Now when you see Charlotte, you might be a little confused with what that name means, and it means basically it's a seed bead that has one cut on the side. And I'm pointing to one right here. It can be a little bit hard to see on camera but they, that one cut gives them a little bit of extra sparkle. And now here I have a tri-cut seed bead. This is a check glass seed bead and it's been cut on three different sides, which gives it a very antique look. I love using these personally. And then I have these little hex cut and these are what they sound like. They've, they're cut into a, a hex shape and these are little Mayuki 15-0 Delicas and it beautifully reflects the light. So that's a little bit of overview of the sizes and the different types you're going to come across. And now I want to talk about finishes. You'll see actually a lot of beads have more than one finish, but I'm going to try to go over the ones that, which you'll see most common. So this here is a color line seed bead. I'm going to take it out real quick so you can see. And you can see it's got a green lining on the inside and it's a transparent blue bead. And now here is a silver lined, so you'll often find a silver, gold, or bronze lined bead. And what that does, it gives it just a little bit of a hint of a metallic look, but you're still really seeing the dominant color. What will be great is you can then pair it with, say, sterling silver accents, or you can really play off that metal color lining. And here I've got a transparent bead, just like the name suggests, it's transparent. There's no color lining, there's no metal finish, it's just a see-through bead. The opposite, of course, of a transparent is going to be an opaque. It's a solid bead. And then you might have something like this, which is going to be an opaque matte. So it's a solid color bead, but it's got a matte finish. You'll see this one here is shiny. You won't see a bead that ever says opaque shiny, but you will see ones that say opaque matte. If it doesn't de uh, designate which one, you can pretty much assume it's probably going to have a little bit of a shine to it. 
This next one here is a luster. A luster has a wonderful pearly sheen to it. And this here is actually a copper lined rose luster. And then we've got AB. You might be able to see this a little bit better in the tube than you can actually see on the mat. AB is like a rainbow finish. It creates just a shimmer. You'll often see this on lighter color beads, like a pink AB, a blue AB, a white AB. And then on the darker colors, what you'll often see is an iris. So an iris is very similar to an AB. It's still a rainbow effect, but is pulling colors that are close to the main color on the color wheel. So it creates almost like a peacock effect. And you'll often see this with a brown bead, a purple bead, a blue bead, a green bead. The next one, these two are the same. They're both galvanized and it's a shiny metal looking coat. So you'll see this usually with bright colors, um, but you can also see it here as like in a rose gold. So certain metal fi finishes also are galvanized. And then the next one is a metal finish. Metal finishes don't just have to be gold and silver. This one here is a like a, a purple color that has a metal finish applied to it. So it makes the beads look as if they're metal. They're super shiny. And then I pulled this as well. This here is a matte galvanized. You can see how that looks. And let me compare that to the shiny galvanized. So again, you're gonna often see a bead that has multiple finishes on it. So you just need to read them carefully and kind of figure out what they mean. So that creates a, kind of a, a more dull appearance. Real pretty though. And then the final one that's popular is a Picasso. And a Picasso finish almost looks like a paint splatter finish. And you'll often see it with, again, browns, uh, blues, greens, turquoises, and it's just more of a modeled effect. And so there are more finishes out there. These are the ones that you're gonna come across most often. So I hope that that helped to visually illustrate what they are and you can understand them better when you're looking at your bead selection. And if you have any questions, feel free to write us on our YouTube channel. We're always happy to help. And I know it's a confusing because there are thousands of seed beads out there and these are just some of them, but I hope this helped to clear it up a little bit.